All right, so in this lesson right here, what I want to do is provide an introductory overview to the editable poly. Now, warning, this is a very basic lesson. This is designed for the beginner working with 3ds Max that's not familiar with working with editable uh, editable anything really, editable polys or an editable mesh when modeling. So we're going to talk a little bit about the sub-objects that actually make it up. And we're not going to get into any of the tools. That's, of course, the idea of all of the other lessons that are available. But I just want them to kind of become familiar with working with the editable poly itself. How do we convert to an editable poly, etc. So the very first thing that I'd like to do is discuss what a polygon is and what an editable poly is. Now, a polygon is basically very basic here, just a surface that has three or more sides. Okay? Now, we generally refer to these sides as edges, and later on we'll be seeing how we can work with edges as a sub-object level type, so it's basically we'll be grabbing a side and moving it. Now, um, these edges just happen to be connected by what, Mr. Logan? Vertices. Vertices, which um, if you're referring to one of these vertices, as they call them, in a singular form, just to say uh, it is referred to as a vertex, and in uh, multiple, it's referred to as vertices. I'm only saying that because with dealing with beginners, with working with 3D, uh, they get into the habit of saying vertexes. Let me grab all of these vertexes over here. No, they're called vertices, just letting you know there. Put some terminology down. Exactly. So, um, so basically, an editable poly is an object that's made up of all of these polygons. And, and the edible poly itself has got like five different sub-object levels that we can get in there and work with. And we'll take a look at those in just a second. So first, let's go ahead and start out and see how we can actually create an editable poly object. Uh, let's go ahead and start by picking on just a standard primitive. I'll go ahead and select a box. That'll work good. And let's just drag out a box here. Let's give it a little bit of height. And I'll right click and go ahead and come over here to my command panel and switch over to the modifier tab. And you know, you see box, and down here in my parameters rollout, I've got all of my basic creation parameters available that are used for generating the geometry that we see over here in our viewports. Okay, meaning that if I wanted to, I can come in here and I can still interactively adjust my length, width, and height, etc. I can come in here and add segments. Now, if I, as I start adding these, take a look at this. Add a couple, add a couple. You see changes occurring in my orthographic viewports. Or, uh, not even the reason they're occurring in the orthographic viewports is because I'm viewing in wireframe right now. But down here in my perspective view, of course, if I was viewing in wireframe, let's hit F3, I can see these, um, these edges being added or the segments being added as well. Let me go ahead and hit F3 again. So in shaded mode, this is just something that you're probably going to want to do when, when modeling. I'm going to come up here to where it says perspective in the upper left-hand corner of the viewport. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to come down to Edged Faces. Turn Edged Faces on, and now I kind of get the best of both worlds. I get it shaded, my geometry shaded, that is, and I also see the actual segments now as I come in here and I add them. Okay? Pretty handy, eh, Logan? Yep. Even more handy would be the hotkey. Right. So as opposed to going up there and selecting Edged Faces all the time, you could simply hit F4 to toggle the Edged Faces on and off and back on again. Okay, so it just acts like a toggle. So now that we've kind of talked about these uh, basic creation parameters, and it's something that we visited, of course, in the past VTMs, um, what happens when I convert this thing over to an editable poly? We're going to lose all of these. So there are times when modeling that you may want to actually keep all of your creation parameters. And the way you would go about doing that is you would actually apply a modifier on top of box and then start modifying at sub-object levels from there, and you'd still be able to go back down in your stack to box itself and start making adjustments to your creation parameters. But this can cause trouble, can't it there, Logan? Right, because depending on what changes you make inside that modifier, if you go back below it and then like totally change how many segments you have, then all of a sudden you have like different input geometry. Exactly. Uh, a quick example, if I was to come down here and throw an editable mesh or an edit mesh modifier on top of box, and now I've got all of my sub-objects I can gain access to. And if I was to come in here and start shaping, so let's say I grab that and let's go ahead and move tool and do 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 do. I have no idea what I'm making. It's just going to be something really fast here. So yeah, this is exciting. So we've made that really cool thing right there. And then for whatever reason, I come back down here later on to box, and I decided that I needed to adjust my actual segments. You notice that as I change my segments to give myself more detail that I'm now starting to get 
Unpredictable results. Unpredictable results. Not a good thing. Now, of course, I can come up here to the edible mesh itself and simply delete the modifier, and it's going to go back to the box, and everything's going to be back to normal. So, um, you know, that may not be a desired thing that you're going after there. But I just wanted to point out that you can keep your creation parameters if you need to. So let's go ahead and just kind of simplify this a little bit again. So what, 2, 2, and 2 looks good. Now, finally, to the moment. How do we convert this thing over to an editable poly? So a couple of ways we can go about it. I'm going to simply right click in my modifier stack and you'll notice in the context menu that I get, I get something called convert to and if I come down here there are several different things that I can convert to. An editable mesh, editable patch, editable poly and NURBS object. So let's go ahead and convert this over to an editable poly and take a look at what happened. Now we don't have our creation parameters no more. The word box up here is gone. In fact, if we expand editable poly, it's not even hiding up under here. Box is now gone forever unless you hit undo. So if there's a chance that you may need to get back to it, you could always save the you select the object and save the selected object out. But you know what? We're not dealing I mean, well, let me find a better way to put that. Let's say that you've got box and then a ton of modifiers on top of it, and there may be some reason that you need to get back to box or any of the other modifiers. Then you may want to select the object and do save select it and save that out so that you can get to it later before actually converting it to an editable poly like I've done here. Because basically, the stack will be collapsed. That means you're not going to have any of these other modifiers still available. So you're going to lose all those parameters. Does that make sense, Logan? Yeah. Okay, so now that we've got our editable poly, you can see the five different sub-object levels that we have available that I was talking about at the very beginning of this lesson. We've got the vertex, edge, border, polygon, and element. Now that's one way of converting over to an editable poly. Let's take a look at another way real quick. Let's go ahead and just come up here and right click. Let's see, convert to base. That was the last thing we just happened to do, so that worked out good. So I could also simply, now we're back to box, I could simply right click on the geometry itself and in my quad menu I can come down here to convert to and then from there you'll see there's all the different things I can convert to and I can convert to editable poly. So I'll go ahead and convert over and you see the exact same thing has happened over here inside my modifier stack. It's gone back to an editable poly again. Now, uh, forewarning, over here, your parameter rollouts are going to be a little bit different by default. I've got all of my things closed up just to keep things nice and neat here at the very start of this. You're going to have a lot of these different things expanded, so don't let that confuse you. If you want to make your screen kind of in sync with mine, just simply minimize all of your different uh, rollouts over here. Keep selection open up, and you'll have the same thing I've got. Now, we got this editable poly by starting out with a box, a, box, a standard primitive. There's other things we can do. Basically, just about every object type uh, that's geometry related. In other words, uh, standard primitives that are, we, you know, NURBS, uh, geometry, standard primitives. Um, um, almost get myself tongue twisted there. Uh, let me say that again. So, standard primitives, NURBS, patches, uh, splines. Basically, we can convert everything. Shapes. Almost shapes himself over to editable polys. Let me demonstrate. I'll come over here to shapes, and let's see. Let's pick on a star. Let's make something strange. Drag out a star. There's my first radius. Let's go ahead and give our second radius maybe something like that. Let's make a really expensive um, European coffee table or little table thing, something like that. I don't know. So here we are with our, our simple shape. I'm going to come over here to the modifier uh, tab again. I'm going to right click. I'm going to come down here, convert it to an editable poly, and check it out. Shaded. We actually have a surface now between all the edges. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, something to be aware of, if I was to rotate around and take a look at the bottom right now, it's not shaded. You've got to be aware that we have uh, normals that we must take into consideration right here. The surface normal of this guy happens to be pointing outwards in this direction so that we can, we can actually see it when we're on this side of the surface itself. But when we rotate over to the bottom, surface normal is now pointing away from us so we see right through it. So unless we force two-sided or, uh, or we apply a material with two-sided type on it, we're not going to see this side. Okay? And very shortly I'm going to show you how we could cap it though. We'll, we'll actually talk about that briefly in this lesson right here. Then we'll talk about it more a little bit later on. Another thing to kind of be careful about when dealing with normals like this is if edged faces happens to be off. Let's just turn that off. Look at that. It looks like the object has gone away, but guess what? It's not gone away. It's still there. It's just that we don't see this side. Okay, there it is. Now it's gone. There it is. Now it's gone. 
Okay, too much fun there. Let's go ahead and hit F4 again. As long as we've got F4 hit, we can still see the outline of it up on the bottom. Now, let's take this thing, now that we've converted it